You scared me. Are you a mansion? <laughs> Big as a house, baby. <laughs> ah! Welcome to this week's episode of Sloppy Seconds, where we have an incredibly smart and intelligent and sexy guest who's also from Houston. That's right. Justin Simeon is on the pod. We talk about making independent film. We talk about the intersectionality of blackness and gayness. And then we talk about... Bitch, did you say you scared me? You're a ma- like a mansion? I did, because it's a haunted mansion. mansion. You directed that movie. No, I, got, I got that. Remember when Bob Iger you called you up Bob and said, Bob Iger said, hey, baby, you want to direct do this that movie? movie? Put Tiffany it. Haddish in it. How are y'all saying it the same exact way? We've been we spent we so much the time. Same. Brain, brain. Oh, that's so cute. Bye. Gay fraternity. <laughs> M. Oh. M. Mom. When your first choice is a big old bus You turn around and boom You end up with a sloppy second Oh, diva Our number is 213-536-9180 Our email is sloppysecondspot at gmail.com Now on with the show Hi, you sloppy, you stupid little f***, you not so f***, you dirty little f***, you stupid little f***. Welcome to Sloppy Second with Big Dipper Meepaw and Meepaw and that's Big Dipper Hello Got a little sheen on you. I'm just a little sweaty today. You look great. I love an expensive feather and a yellow brassiere. Thank you so much. What color lip is that? It's earthy. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't put left, on a wig. I, I don't left. wear makeup. But I do understand visual aesthetics, and I am curious as it's to like that. It's supposed to be like a natural, almost natural lip tone. Yeah, because the rest of what you do is so natural. I'm and why are you drenched with you. sweat? And why did you decide to do that and put us all through this with your foggy glasses and the smell? The smell. Oh. I oh. took what they refer to as a whore's bath okay. here at work. Mm-hmm. And I wiped myself down mm-hmm. and I changed shirts and I brushed my teeth. And mm-hmm. now I'm ready to work. Yes, I did come from Mark and lifting weights. but and it was forcing him to shoot a little YouTube internet. No, I meant to shoot a promo today and I totally forgot. I'm going to have to do it after this. Well, where, what are you going to do without Mark's hot body there? I know. I guess no one will be interested. Why don't you bring on our guest? Our guest this week is a writer, a director, a filmmaker, a trailblazer, and a gay. It's Justin Simeon! Hello! You just outed me. Uh, you outed... I think you outed yourself when you married a man. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you married a man. It's true. <laughs> Didn't you? I was doing some research ahead of time oh, of you no. coming Uh-oh. here. Oh, now, no. there's, that is listen, not my account. It was light. <laughs> <laughs> it was light, it, light research. Okay. So in some research, it said that mm. you um, publicly came out when you took your film to Sundance. But that was just because that was the first time you were like out in a public forum. I don't know what anyone is talking or about. Or have you been um, gay gay yeah, for a long time? Yeah, when did you decide no, that you were true. gay? No, it's true. It's decide. The decision was made, <laughs> um, I believe, somewhere <laughs> around five or six years old. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, it was very early in life. Uh, but I think, I, I think honestly, like, Anyone paying attention would have known that I was gay. Yeah, <laughs> the That's whole how time. I feel about like Ellen. Oh, yeah, she was like clearly Ellen. Well, she came out very early. She came out in that comedy special, that stand-up special. No, she came out like she six came out on seasons the show. into her sitcom. Yeah, she came out on the show. Oh, and then on People Magazine, I think, right? Yep, I'm yeah. gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to. It was the first Q and A for Dear White People. I just wanted to get it out of the way. Right. Somebody was like, "Why did you make the character Lionel gay?" And I was like, "Because I too am gay." And everyone applauded. And indeed I am. And indeed I am. <laughs> no, wait. Everyone but applauded? No one they applauded? At Sundance? It was so... <laughs> because I'm true. gay. Yes, it was a huge applause break for that. But were you publicly... Da- well, publicly. Were you dating men at that point? Oh, yes. And just, I was 30, yes. But you weren't 30. I know, I look but, really young. Yeah, I but, know. You know. 10 years ago, I was 30. I was just curious. You know, they report on it. They were like... First publicly came out as gay. So. <laughs> that was a that was the first instance I think anything I'd done made a public record of any kind. Gotcha. So and it was like 2013 at that time. There was a there were a lot of um, homosexual African Americans in Hollywood that were not out, out? and yeah. it was sort of like. I just I really need to do it early so that I it doesn't become a thing. I then have to do late. you know what I'm saying? Right. I didn't want I, to get caught in the trap. We have a friend, um, Tien, mm-hmm. who is an actor and initials. played gay at what did you say? 
I said not initials. No, I was trying to figure out who it's it is. No, her, her first name is Tian. <laughs> Tian Tran. <laughs> Tian Tran. I'll Got get it. into that last okay. name. Okay, <laughs> right. The last <laughs> Come on, Tran. She's everything. Vietnamese. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Get into Tien that Tren. last name. Tien Tran. Okay. okay. There is so, Tien Tran. Anyways. There t- is. Tien, <laughs> Tien's sort of like most notable role was on the Hulu show, the How I Met Your Father reboot okay. they did with Hilary Duff. Okay. And she's queer on the show. Yes. And so I asked her recently, I was like, when you're getting scripts or getting auditions, like, are you often reading queer roles? And she's like, yeah, all the time. Mm. So she's so grateful that, you know, she didn't have to play straight for the first big public right. thing. Right, and right. then sort of had to like negotiate that. So I think thing. that's a cool thing. Like on your first like big outing into the world, you're like, yeah. but is she getting straight roles? Uh, yeah, are of they course. offering her that? Are you only getting offered gay movies <laughs> yes. to direct now? Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about specifically woo! the Disney ones. Well, you don't get they, they don't offer you gay movies, but <laughs> you definitely don't get. Like I'm not getting the same pile of scripts as Ryan Coogler <laughs> or Barry Jenkins for mm, sure. I'm right. not. Yeah. Interesting. But I don't know why that is. I could I can make suppositions and and, and guesses. Why don't you do it's, that right here on the podcast? It's the, the gay why thing. Do it straight stuff to the camera. See. Ask Bob Iger what's see going a on. I, I'm not asking. I'm not asking Bob nothing. Um, <laughs> why y'all so homophobic, Hollywood? There you go. There it is. That's the question. So, dear white people, yes. we all remember when it came out. Oh yeah, it was like obviously a huge hit. Like catapulted your career. Correct me if I'm wrong. Indie feature. You wrote and directed it. Mm. You raised forty grand on Indiegogo, something like that. Yeah, was there more money, or you made the whole film on that kind Child, of coin? Please, no. We for, so the forty grand. What it allowed me to do, I got to hire um, uh, Kim Coleman, our casting director, who is amazing. Slay, because yeah, that cast is yes, unbelievable. And, and we scooped up Tessa, and we scooped up Tyler, and uh-huh. we scooped up Tiana Paris, and we like started building a cast. And by the time we had like a few people with it and our campaign had done so well, financers started to come in okay. because they were like, okay, this is a thing. This is like a moving train. It's going to be a real But we movie. still made the movie for under a million. Because like, that's wasn't, crazy. When I read that and I was like, you made that on that money? So I understand what you, what, what yeah. the Hollywood Because uh, he spends $15,000 on a music video. Isn't oh. that crazy? Not really. That's like not, that's like a, that's but a But people lean, watch your movie. Oh, you know, what, you know what's funny? Can, let me tell you something, though, about Dear White People. I, it is a hit, and I'm glad, and it was amazing, and I'm an icon. However, <laughs> at the time... There is the sleigh button. At, at the time, <laughs> none of those things were clear at all. Like, we did not sell out of Sundance. Right. We, you know, we made, like, some money at the box office. It was cute, but it wasn't, like, give Justin, send me another job immediately. Cute. Uh, it took a minute for that to even register in popular culture as a hit. You know what I'm saying? So, right. It took some time. But, but you very smartly knew how stupendous of a, a film it was that you held on to it and you said, and now we make it a TV show. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And thank you for the Netflix money. Yes, that was part of me not getting any other work. Um, <laughs> to be completely frank. But when it's right, it's right. When it's you know right, what I it's mean? Right. Yeah. And, and it was Tara Duncan. That's the, I will always give her her credit. Tara Duncan was the executive at Netflix, black lady, came up to me at Sundance and was like, this should be a show. And I was like, I agree. Do you have a check? And she was like, not yet. And so when I went on tour with the movie, because when we when I left Sundance, like, y'all, when I left Sundance, I couldn't pay my February rent, okay? Mm. Sundance oh, was in wow. January. I couldn't pay February rent. We hadn't sold the movie yet. And so I made my money by, like, showing the movie to colleges and getting a speaker fee to, like, host, like, a panel discussion about racism. Kind of yes. And so while I was doing that, I was gathering stories from, you know, the kids who were actually children uh, in actual colleges. And, like, I would literally go back to my hotel room and, like, flesh out what if it was a TV show. And so by the time... I think like 2016, 2017 rolled around and I was like, bills are due again. I was able to go forth with that. We, I had fully developed it from just like being on the road with the movie. That's amazing. That's so crazy. To have that, that foresight. It re- I mean, what was it like going to the college campuses and visiting though? Crazy. They're nuts, right? Crazy. And the funny thing is like, because that I feel like immuned me to like really rowdy Q and A's because <laughs> The children were not happy. My shit was not black enough. It was not gay enough. It was too black. It was too gay. It was oh, like, yeah. wow. I just got a full spectrum of of, of all the crazy people uh, in the country, but some really smart, wonderful, inspiring people, too. Um, 
It was like a real like boot camp for this. It's so interesting that so many of the themes in the film mm-hmm. are about mm-hmm. not being black enough, not being gay enough, intersectionality, yeah. and then you get that same criticism about the work. Oh, absolutely. I, I learned with Dear White People to put the commentary of the work in the work. Like, Dear White People was a script called 2%. Uh, and it was about the 2% black population on this college campus. And there was this girl in the script, Sam White, had a radio show called Dear White People. Mm-hmm. I started a Twitter account called Dear White People to test out her jokes. Right. And a lot of the responses to her jokes, like, informed the plot, like, in a very direct... I was like, wow. oh, that's what white people would do. Interesting. You know, and so, like, some of the things people were saying just when it was a Twitter account ended up in the script. And obviously that's where the, the name came from and... All that kind of stuff. And I did the same thing with the movie. Okay. Girl, right? Why are you, you know? smart? Why are you I so smart? desperate, you know? It's like no. you got to get in there. Creative engine. Yeah. You got to get That's in there. That's what you, it is. You got to use what you got and make it work. That's the Houston in you. That is that Houston. Oh. You don't stop. Meatball's from Texas. I'm from Houston, too. Hey. Are well, you from Houston? Katie. Oh, that counts. That counts. Does it really? Everyone's always like, nah, No, it counts. Okay, There's like counts. a lot of different. It's right outside. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. we used to go to the gallery all the time. Yes, that's all you need. That's all you Oh. Okay, I didn't know they had that at the gallery. They Bo- do. They do. Booger sugar. You got the sugar boogers. Mm. <laughs> you ever done cocaine? I tried it way too late. Uh, By the time I tried it, I was like, this is like coffee and the back of my neck is itchy. And now I got to go clean my hands. And I'm old. <laughs> yeah, I just like, I didn't, it wasn't for me. Yeah. Well, what's not a joke is ADHD, which is why I am on Adderall and weed. <gasps> And well, Adderall is just legal cocaine. It's I don't just know, legal I don't methamphetamine. Know what it is, but it, it gets the work done. Yes, it do. Because when I started taking Adderall, I was like, "Oh, this is what normal people are talking about." Mm-hmm. Like this is just. It doesn't get me hype at all. It just mm-hmm. literally brings me to the surface of the earth. <laughs> I used to take Adderall, and then it almost killed me because I was oh, taking no. too much of it because Dr. Sharon Packer in New York wanted me dead. Okay. Sharon, Sharon, give, give me her number because you know there's a shortage, and I'd be running out. So I, oh, yeah, I saw the thing where people are getting shortage. pills with like less inside the actual capsule, like the extended release ones. <gasps> Cause that's the kind I take. Yeah, it's the orange and white one. That's why I've been getting crazier. Yeah, and because crazier. they put less. Anyway, so people have been getting that. complaints about that, and then um, but anyway, yeah, no, it drove oh, me crazy, and it makes me a zombie. So I had to stop. Like I need to be kooky and crazy. Yeah, but I, my house do be a mess if I don't. Oh, do a my life do cleaning. be a mess if I don't. I need to be kooky and crazy. <laughs> I do. Could you imagine if I was normal? It, it, Adderall is the one where I'm like, I'm like, I may very well have undiagnosed ADHD, and I am so curious to try. It made it. me you abs- would know. It made me absolutely clear that I have ADHD mm-hmm. because it just didn't do the thing. It, it wasn't like I'm so excited. It wasn't that. It was like. <laughs> Oh, oh, hello. Why don't you get some work done? Why yeah, it's like, done? here's these four emails that you need to respond literally to. Literally, that's, that's what how it... how I feel. Yeah, You literally, respond to the emails. I'd be like cleaning and shit at night. Like, it's I'm a, an adult. I went over to, <laughs> this, adult. I went over to this man's house to f*** him. Oh, okay. And I was, was like, how have really you been? And early. How have you been? And he yeah. was like, well, I diagnosed my ADHD, so yes. now I can really focus on taking f***. Because before, I used to give up. After only 20 minutes, I would get bored. That's what he said. I don't really Just know what to do with all of that information. You know what? Okay. Let's go. So he, but he was already an established <laughs> bottom and top, but and top before the before the Adderall. Yes, but he said he just couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't go all the way. He couldn't really zone in, and now he's like, I'm dedicated. Well, I'm gonna tell Adderall. y'all something on Adderall or off. Yeah, that's not happening for me. Okay. I was waiting for you at the door. <laughs> 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 but when I used to take Adderall, it would sometimes make me so fist. not fist, never, never in my life. I, but um, so horny sometimes. Really? Yeah, it would be so horny. Oh, we don't do that. Especially late at night. You don't do that for me. You ever mix it with alcohol? I mean, yeah, because I'm on it all the time, mm, mm, <laughs> and I drink mm, occasionally. Mm, mm. It's the weed, though. The weed and Adderall. <laughs> that mix for me is that's that's the secret to life. Like that I makes really, me too paranoid. I don't know how I would be a black gay man in Hollywood without those two things. Me personally, it's true. Mm. Let's mm. take a break. And on that, let's take a break. Yeah, you know, drugs. <laughs> Meatball, slide to your left. Crisscross. Everybody clap clap your hands. How how long does that part go? Long. 
Just like in that one. Hi, we're back. Let's Just like in that one Usher song where he goes, oh, 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 my God. It's too long. What's the name of that song again? No. No idea. Justin. Usher's Rhapsody. Hi. Justin. Justin. Okay, you, after the success of your film and your series, you are like now in the Hollywood machine. Like you get like beep boop pop, it's Disney. Hey, boop boop boop, it's Paramount. Like you, you are in those rooms that so many people think about or dream about. They're all from home now, but yes. Well, what is that like? Oh, you don't go to a place and they give you a bottle of water no, over I, and over and over. I, not again. any goddamn more. I learned that damn trick. Never again. No, I have a, I have my own. <laughs> What's office. the trick? Well, they, they they do this especially with the diversity clients, child. They, you. <laughs> They don't. They're not gonna make your shit, but they'll invite you to their office. And Let's have a general. Oh, to Let's say to like, oh, other. well, we brought him in. Yes. Yeah, so oh yeah, so we, we took a meeting. We with took Justin. a meeting with. Oh, the he, person he of got color. a Fiji we water. From we, us. He got two Fiji waters. <laughs> he was extra thirsty. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, how does it feel? Awful. I don't like it. I mean, <laughs> it's helpful. It's a platform. You know what I mean? Like it's like I have. We have a my company culture machine. I have an office, you know, that I go into for that, which is paid for by a deal with Paramount. Right. Um, I just made a movie for Disney. You know, you gotta pl- I don't know how to really do it without the machine. I don't know how to do it without the machine. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's not great. <laughs> It's yeah. a difficult is a difficult life getting yeah. up in that machine. Because you say. have to kind of squeeze and bend and do this and do that. Yeah. And there's so many cogs to it. Uh-huh. That's a really politically great way to say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what did you what was different about like making bad hair mm. versus making the haunted mansion? Okay, so the pro con thing is like bad hair, I could do whatever the I want because mm-hmm. it was yours, but I had no money. <laughs> and but no you time. had Kelly Rowland. We had Kelly Rowland now. Andrea and man, Meepal just watched uh, Mia Culpa. Yes, Mia Culpa. I haven't seen it yet. What, what was your experience? Well, we were, I reviewed it on um <gasps> on Netflix with Trixie, and it was very fun. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. It's a good movie. I'm gonna check well, it out. Well, it's a good. It's it's it, a Tyler Perry. It's movie. a hoot. It's a hoot. Yeah, it's, it's one of those ones where you're like, oh. Huh, why, why, why the yes. whole time? And she got big old titties. Some of my favorite. Movies. It's really her. Now, did you get Calendria to say? Because you know she said it in Freddy versus or in that Freddy. <laughs> she one. did say it. She did. And no, I got to tell you something. This is the. This truly is one of the nicest people I've ever met. And it's crazy because, like, for bad hair, you know, I wrote some songs or whatever. Like, I wrote some music. Songwriter. For it. Mm-hmm. Songwriter. And this is Kelly. This is Kelly mother. Rolling from mm-hmm. Destiny's right. Child. And she took my song and she sang the hell out of it. She she was so f- humble and gracious and hardworking and just truly, truly a real, genuine, down to earth, wonderful f- person. And I just want to say that because I've seen some of the rumors out there about dressing rooms and all that kind of stuff. What no. is that? And I don't, I don't buy that. That that's is not so. Her. That's just no, her. the truth came out later or something. I forgot what it was, but it was about like the way someone was treating it was, someone it was else. Something about Beyonce. They were yeah. asking her too many Beyonce questions or something. I don't know. Was that No, the that truth? wasn't the truth. That it was something it. else because oh. it wasn't about the dressing room either. Oh, sh- What it was. Layers. Well, that's the other thing about her. She'll ne- like, she, she's not going to rattle nobody either. Right. <laughs> she's just going to pick up her bag because guess what? In this lifetime, listen, she does not need, need to nothing. be or do anywhere absolutely or not. anything. Not. It oh, is all by not. choice. So absolutely if she not. is ready to pick up her probably uh, Birkin bag yes. and walk out of that room, she will do. <laughs> she's also such a good actress. She yeah, like really when is. I was watching Mia Culpa, I was like, she's actually the only one that's like really grounding this in any reality. She's another Houston chick. She's real. Like the craft is real yeah. on this one. Like for real. Do you remember her reality show? Where she was building the girl group? No! She oh had a reality God, I do show? I remember that. Yes. So the, girl, the girl group was called June's Diary. Questionable name. Stop that. But it was Stephanie's called June's Di- it was Diary. Not called June's that was Diary. where Who they landed. June? <laughs> Who is June? Was June a member of the group? No. Latavia's Diary. Okay. I, <laughs> but Kelly was incredible. I mean, she auditioned. Hundreds of girls. She whittled it down. She, you know, it was like making the band, but with integrity. What was it? MTV? No, uh, it was a BT show. Okay. And they go and they sing with who's that famous uh, voice coach, Steve? Steve Mackey. Steve Zahn. Oh. No, the one who uh, is the voice coach, Steve Mackey. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Um, uh, Simon Cowell. No. Steve Mackey. 
Oh yeah. No, it wasn't him. It was someone else. Anyways, the they go and they sing. The the they face. sing with this the like face. amazing voice coach. She teaches all these people like what it takes to be a singer. She's right there harmonizing with them. It's why she's such a good coach on uh, the voice when yeah, she does I that. Watched her and like UK voice, I watched them joints on YouTube because she was the one. She stays yeah. working. She's been on every show ever. Yeah, she's great. When love she's takes great. over, bitch. Yeah. Commander. Do you know the song? When love takes over. It's a real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't deny. Deny. The, me and Kelly, and like seeing her in real life do all the things that she does, like as a vocalist, like seeing her in the studio and then seeing her on the set, it's one of those things. It's crazy. It's like music success is really not about talent because this is one of the most talented people I've ever, ever met. And she has her flowers and she has success and enjoyment, but like, God damn, like she is truly, truly incredible. So bad but bad hair mm -hmm. was dope. It was a great movie. Within, Me and my friends watched it like five times. I don't even like oh, scary movies. So I was like, it I was need to watch it. Horrifying by the end. Oh, I appreciate that. Cause it was really like <laughs> I was kind of going for like camp, you know, to yeah. have some fun yeah. with the kids. But like I I it, you have to it, I could do everything I wanted to, but within a very finite budget and a very finite amount of time. You right. know, like it was squee it was like the worst time to make the movie. I was doing Dear White People season three. There were I had no choices. It was like we are writing Dear White People downstairs and I'm shooting bad hair upstairs. Like I was a cra the Adderall was working, uh -huh. honey, okay? That was before the shortage. Right, exactly. And, and, but <laughs> we, shot that, we shot that movie in like 20-some days. What? Oh. Honey, Mansion, on the other hand, we shot that shit in like 110, 12 days or something like that. Like I had, I was like, this is never going to end. Because there was like an endless budget? I guess, maybe. I and it was know. like, what, one day for the chair stunt? <laughs> Stop. Like, hey, no. no, I'm kind just It's like the entire kind day of. is like just. It really take those movies take so much time because one, there's a lot. That's the thing that that's the that's the trade off. You get all the money. Like you're never gonna worry about money or like a crane breaking or like losing the location. That's never gonna come up for you. But in exchange for all the, those resources, you got a lot of mother people okay right. uh, you got a lot of white men's hands on the steering wheel that you were trying to drive all right you're like oh no i got i got i got it yeah i, I got it and i'm a very <laughs> diplomatic person and i'm very like i like to work with people i'm not a dictator like i like that but child it's an interesting experience i don't know if it's exactly the uh what i thought directing was but it was is an experience but you got to go through all of these committees to get things done and then when you're on the set, you sh you have to shoot things multiple times because you want to sh you have to shoot them for the actors. Then they want to shoot them again so that everything's scanned in and digital so that they can redo the scene if they want to. If swap you, if, face face swap. If your ass gets fired, if they if they decide they don't want you no more, or if something's not working or whatever, they want all of the options. So like it it really like that chair scene we shot. So we shot it with Tiffany, shot it with a stunt double, shot it with just the chair, no chair. Like, it was just like, that was that experience. And yes. do you, like, in that kind of a machine, Yes. do you, do you even though you are in charge as the director, do you kind of feel like that AD who's like, okay, and then we got to move on to this, is like more running the show than anything else? Yeah. <laughs> you definitely feel on a Hollywood movie that as a director, you're not at all at the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's like, not at all. Like, not, you have to, and I'm just to be real with you, you have to be, there's, there's two people, I've, two kinds of people I've seen make it work. Just straight, you're a f asshole right. dictator. You come in there mm. and it's like, and it, you better be a white man, okay? Right. Because if if not, I don't know if that shit will fly. I've seen a lot of black directors go down in flames trying to do that style of directing. Or you have to be like Ryan Coogler, who is not that guy, but somehow like he just walks into a room and ex like executives are just like, it's like the second. He's mm. he's just the coolest dude. He's got like a cool vibration right. that just calms every. I don't know what I have, but I didn't necessarily Adderall. get that. That I have Adderall, <laughs> and so people were really well, hype. Uh, you've got. <laughs> You got Tree. the fag factor. I got that, honey. The fag factor. And I felt it was a factor. But anyway, the point is. <laughs> oh. There's a lot because you're working with a lot of people who are right. local to that. You know, they're not necessarily the person in the variety article that you associate with the company. Yeah, you know right. So there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. There's a lot of kings and queens and all those kind of that you got to deal with. When you at that level, have you okay? So it's always true what they say, like in Hollywood, like oh, when you go in for a meeting, the assistant or like the receptionist or like you're on a big call and like. 
the publicity person who's pitching like an Instagram story idea will eventually become a studio head or an executive. Yeah, you never know. Do you feel that way? Because you had sort of lower jobs at lower. big companies. You heard him. He said it. I was low. I was. And really? now he's elevated. No, it's true. You never know. I, Where'd you work? You worked at Paramount? You worked at Focus Features? I, you worked at Sony? All those places, yeah. That's actually, you know, it's funny. I met Ava DuVernay. Uh, and Stephanie Stephanie Elaine was uh, the main producer on Dear White People. Mm -hmm. Met both of them uh, when I was an assistant at Focus. Uh, and uh, I, the movie was called Something New. And when they do black movies, you know, you bring in the black PR firm. So that was mm -hmm. Ava. And you had the black producer. That was Stephanie. And I met them. And they... and they, She was at a PR... She was yeah, working at a PR firm? Ava was like... One of the, was the black publicist at, at that time. And then she said, let me make the art. Moment. Pretty much. Let me get on the other side of this. She was... Because I was in publicity too. So like I literally got to see her do it. And then wow. I was like, that's what I'm going to... I'm doing that as well. <laughs> um, but they remembered my name because there aren't a lot of black people in Hollywood right. and that always really stuck with me and I've seen it happen myself people who I was would take a phone call here and there suddenly that's the person I'm taking a meeting with it happens all the time especially right now in Hollywood the turnover rate is high okay well remember this face She's gonna yes. be. I'm gonna just I forget it? Up. I will just, never forget. I'm it. gonna be the biggest dealer in Hollywood. <laughs> the biggest deal. You're gonna you're gonna walk in a room and say deal, deal or no deal island. And I just open up two briefcases <laughs> of cocaine. I, I, Who's I'm, in <laughs> that one? What? <laughs> I'm ready. Wait, what's deal or no deal, no deal island? Have you seen the promos for this? I, I know my friend, pr my friend's husband produced it though. But why? How is it on? Maybe island they're on now? an island. Who cares? I, yeah, I can't make sense of it at all. There's, Who needs it? Briefcase. It feels like those old. <laughs> 30 Rock sketches where they would just be like, <laughs> Mill Filen, and Island. then it happened. Delora. You know, like, it feels like <laughs> Mid Journey, too. It just feels like they're just throwing shit into an AI and it comes up. Because Honestly, like, probably. I don't know why it's on an island. I saw the same billboard. He's got yeah, big just, case, he, and it's just tropical trees. And it's, and it's Joe, Joe Mangiello. Mangiello. Man, he's is so the host. hot. That's why I'll be watching. If it's an island, hold on, uh, uh, producers. If it's an island, why is he covered up in a suit? If yeah, it's exactly. an island, he could be in Let's beachwear. Get, yeah. <laughs> no, Let's get him in that Magic Mike song again. It's got to be warm, right? It's got to be very Cover, warm. Put the water on you like you're in the gas station. <laughs> what is this? Mm -hmm. That's what he was pouring. The, have you not <laughs> oh. seen Magic Mike 2? <laughs> Listen, yeah, Where they got to save the club? Yeah, it's basically just. They know what they have. They know exactly. Well, maybe he slowly, as the deals come, he slowly starts to strip it Listen, off. Listen, let's hope. He actually asks it like, deal? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, no, no deal? deal. That, that will so keep funny. me tuned the f in. Yeah. Have That's you true. ever, because there's also all those Hollywood stories about like, oh, when I was an assistant, this person treated me like trash, and Ooh. now I'm like, not their boss, but I am in charge of them. Have you run into that mm -hmm. situation? And do you treat them like trash, or do you no, just go, the I Adderall don't. never forgets? No, the thing is, you... Big, big mistake. Uh, here's huge. The, huge. Here's the thing. Hollywood is real, real small, okay? Feels so huge, when, me. and especially when you start to whittle it down to, like, some, like, you're not a white straight man, like, sometimes, you know, we got to keep those secrets safe in the mm -hmm. community, if you know what I'm talking about? So I treat people... I treat people as well as I can. I'm not a net. You know what? I, I like to say I'm kind. I'm not always. I'm not always going to be nice. Uh -huh. I'm not, because like sometimes I can't tell you something's wrong in a nice way. But I'll always be kind. Like yes. I'm not going to berate a person or bring like uh, like I'm not going to try to get my power, or get my jollies off by being in charge of people. Like that doesn't do it for me at all. But I've met a lot of people who have, and we all smile in the picture and we say <laughs> cheese. <laughs> And then it's time to go home. And it's time to go home. And I just know, I know what it is. <laughs> it's we all say good. cheese. We say hey. I will Everybody. say Hollywood is smaller than I thought. Because I thought there's like, I mean, for me, it's just makeup artists that I deal with. But I've worked with the same makeup artist at Netflix, at Disney, and at this thing that I recently shot. And I was like, mm -hmm. why is it always you? And they're like, when it's a person of color, I get called. And I was like. That makes sense. Yep. Yep. How much of your makeup did they? Tell? They were supposed to fully do my makeup when I got there, and, and I like, said, mm, no, 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 I'm gonna do my own. And then they touched me up when I got there, which was nice. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great people. Too. How about Oprah? I've not. I've only met Oprah once. She shook my hand. She's, that's. Oh huge. wait, that's a lie. I zoomed with Oprah. That's a lie. I zoomed with Oprah. What did her Zoom say? Yeah, what and was what was background? her room? What was the background? It was fabulous, bitch. I don't exactly know. I just remember like her She was probably on one of those Cisco, like, like you're on Zoom on your computer, but she is on one of those like. Like a system. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A system. And then there's just like baskets of Honey, fruits were, and vegetables truly, behind Truly, it was depth of field. Okay? <laughs> it was like, there's a, like not only, you know, I had a wall behind me. There was like 
a sp- it was like her house in the state just kept going. It was honestly very beautiful, and I was pitching for something, and I was very nervous. Uh, but I've only had a couple encounters, and she was very lovely. Now, what about Beyonce? Have you met Beyonce? I have. <gasps> Me and Beyonce went to the same high school <gasps> in Texas. So oh! I met her. I met her when I was a freshman in high school. Oh. I met her again during the TRL Destiny's Child tour of 1999, I believe. Me and my friend Deontay broke into the George R. Brown Convention Center and like accosted her, Kelly and Michelle, with all swarm. these magazines. Swarm. Very swarm. <laughs> I'm obs- I love Beyonce. And then I ended up uh, at one of her parties, I think. Yeah, one of her par- like she There was a Halloween party. The mouth biting? She or dan- the face She bite? came over. She danced with me and my husband. She was the nicest, sweetest lady. Never really chopped it up, but we've like run into each other a few times. I'm so jealous. Dance with Beyonce at a Halloween dance with party? Beyonce. We did. What were you wearing for Halloween? I think I was like, uh, first of all, the invitation, I was like, let's grab some shit real quick. So I think I was like. Oh, never. I, yeah, I know. I wasn't. Regret. I think I was like Robin Hood or some shit. I don't remember. Oh, that makes sense. It was cute. It's a I cute outfit. Like, and I your husband was Lil John? He was big, John. He's taller than me. So. No, I know. But He's he, taller than you? I need to see been, a picture of this man. He could have been Lil I John think I might, I might Lil John and the East Side Boys and the wordplay. I want to see Robin Hood and us Lil John. Yeah! Oh, we could have done that. We didn't do that. Jokes. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> You ever heard of Wicked? I have heard of it. Yeah. Have you ever seen Wicked? I have seen it. Where? You know what? I just heard. I just heard what you just did. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Chris, Cynthia Chris, now. Chris, Chris and Chinaway did that, right? Yeah. It was yeah. the little white one. Yeah. 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 No, it's Cynthia Arrivo. Oh, I haven't seen Cynthia's version. Well, that's, that was it's it. in the trailer. Oh, okay. So you don't watch oh, trailers? I did. You said I make movies. I do Adderall. I'm not going to watch a I trailer. I specifically have seen that trailer, too. I just did. It took That's me a minute. That's the new riff, Mama. That's the new one. It wouldn't Because it, it used to be, you. ooh, ah, ah, Oh, I see. And now she goes, ooh, ah, ah, ah. Okay, I hear it. She the, gives it I to you. I hear it. Thank you for thank you. For you want it one more that. time? No, well, I okay. think I got it. Yeah. Thank you so I much. I, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Are you excited for the movie? I am. Yeah, I'm so cool. excited. I'm gonna see. Hopefully, the first one ends where Act One ends. Okay, and then I won't see the second movie because he really? split it up into two. He did. Everyone knows two. that Wicked is yes. the second act is terrible, so making it two movies seems like a really bad idea. I terrible? have an I have a um a pitch, and I don't know anything about the script or anything. But what if you know in the musical? Because you've seen it. I have, but it's. Been a, like, I don't remember the second half being terrible. It's bad. I, you, and Cynthia Riva gonna listen to this episode. No, she, uh, yes, she is. Are you friends? You yeah. know her? Oh fuck. Well, I think she's gonna do a wonderful job. <laughs> I no, I'm you actually know? very excited for Cynthia Riva. Cynthia, I think it was so crazy that everyone was like when they found out that Ariana Grande wanted to be Alphaba uh-huh. so bad, and they were like, she's gonna be in the movie. Everyone's like, oh, she's Alphaba, and then she's like, I'm Glinda. <gasps> she went blonde. Yes, and yes. I just want to work it in. And um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I'm so excited for the Cynthia, first time. Co- come on the pod. Come on the pod. Cynthia. You didn't write the play. So the second act is, we'll ask. You know nothing about the mu- the movie, which is what she's tied to. Yeah. Tell us about your project, Hollywood Black. Uh, I love Hollywood Black, actually. I'm, I'm, I was That was a canned reaction. Ooh. I'm really Take it back, take it back. Tell us about your project, no, Hollywood no, we Black. Get, I, no, take two. Uh, take two. <laughs> I'm really excited about <laughs> it. <laughs> That's the Adderall kicking in. Honey, but my meeting voice is wild. Okay. Um, Wait, do you feel like you have to code switch to do like those meetings? I walk in, I go, I like I see your background. I'm like loud when I do the I Zoom meetings. I li- I, I, I ha- I'm in a process of teaching myself not to do that as much, but absolutely not. I was like, I was in PR when I started. Oh. Uh, I can make it white. I can make it straight. I can make it black. I can make it straight. I can make it extra gay. Like I can, you know, there's different modes. You got, mm. you got to sing for yourself at sometimes. What was the question? B- black people, Hollywood black. Hollywood, Hollywood black. black. Hollywood black. Yeah, Hollywood black is like, y'all. I was about to quit the industry. Not really, but I was really f- depressed. It was like after bad hair, I come back from Sundance, and for a variety of reasons. I was just like really not feeling the Hollywood. I was not feeling it. I was feeling very alone. I was feeling like just really kind of beat up. And 
what I do because I'm a nerd is I kind of read and I, I, I like bury, I like rabbit hole into different things. And I always felt like there's just not anything about like black history when it comes to film, when it comes mm. to cinema. Mm. It's like, you know, you, if you, you might have heard of Oscar Michaud and then yada, 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 you might not have. You probably heard of Birth of a Nation, all that mm -hmm. racist Yada yada yada, black exploitation. Yada yada yada, Spike Lee. That's pretty much everybody's like black history. And I was needing yeah. a bit. I was needing a bit more. And um, I was reading one of my favorite books by Donald Bogle. He's like a huge black historian. He wrote a, he wrote the book Hollywood Black. Um, and I was just really kind of getting fed by like all this. Shit I never learned in film school. Mm. And um, I was like, I was just doing this for myself. And you know, uh, Criterion. Uh, channel wanted to do like a collection of my favorite filmmakers and those filmmakers have typically been like you know white people and I was like I don't want to do that I want to like I, I want to actually like get y'all to put black filmmakers unearth these like vintage movies that I can only see like on YouTube or at like the public library right put them on your channel and like let's get into it and it just launched this like discovery for me and um I got together with a friend named Jeffrey Schwartz who is uh, a really great uh documentarian he makes a lot of great gay docs um and we were like let's do a documentary and this was like a very long journey <laughs> it's a very long walk to get here but Eventually, we were able to get Donald Bogle, get the rights to Hollywood Black, uh, and get um, Forrest Whitaker's company on board. And we've just been making this doc over the past few years, and it's finally ready. And wow. and the idea is, like, I want to take you... Because what I found is that, like all things in America, you cannot get to movies. You can't get to cinema without Black people at all. Like, it's not, like, a thing that we're trying to break into. No. Like... Right. The reason why Birth of a Nation was so big is because it's just minstrelsy in a movie. Right. Yeah. That's what people in America were used to sitting down for two hours at a time to see. Right. And so, like, of course they build this on our backs, and then they erase us from the history. And so mm. this is about putting us back in the history. All those other people and directors that you never heard of, but white people copied them and they became famous with the formula, we're going to tell you about those people. And we're going to tell you about what really went down between, you know, like Lena Horne and Hattie McDaniels. And we're going to take you through, you know, the 60s and the 70s and the other filmmakers that you just didn't know about. Yeah. That who I discovered and was like, what the f***? This is amazing. If I knew mm -hmm. that it wasn't just me and Jordan Peele out here trying to make black horror, <laughs> like I, I like I would have felt so much better, you know, going through just the process. Like, I don't know. Hollywood makes you feel really good about being the first or the only. Like that's the whole they want you mm -hmm. to feel Ooh. very novel in that way, but it's a very lonely, isolating way to do your work. Right. Yeah. To realize that whatever you do actually comes in a lineage of people like you, even though they're not in the history books. It just meant a lot to me. Yeah. And somehow I've been able to pour that into a thing that's actually going to come out. I don't know why. I'm so happy that it's happening. That's amazing. That's incredible. Um, but yeah. Well, I, no, when you were saying that, I was like, I went to film school and I was thinking about it and I was like, yeah, I only, well, I went to school for acting and directing. That's film. And it was film ish. Is film, film or theater? Theater, but also I took directing <laughs> classes and we had yeah. to do. Theater history Hello? and theater history, or Minstrelsy. and we also had to learn about film history. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm taking. What you did seriously. you go to school for? Oh. Theater. Did it work out? Oh, yeah. No, but and in so high school, anyway, we never anybody. learned anything about any black directors or anything like that. We never got uh, exposed to any of that. And I was, as you were talking, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. like it's so. F up. Yeah. I mean, but that's like American history. American history. Uh, in school in Texas, they were like, yeah, no, slavery wasn't that bad. Listen, it was fine. Yeah. They don't tell you this. No. Shit, you know? And and the gays, we get it. Uh, we get it. We get it on both sides. It's like they, they just literally remove us from the history. Yeah. But like for, you know, for you, for me to, when I started making bad hair, I really was like, there just aren't black horror movies for yeah. me to see. And by the time I finished making bad hair, I like had all these other films to look at and it just like put me in a different headspace about what I do, what my role is in the industry, like how to think about when things really suck or when the work is really hard, why I need to keep going. So I, I poured that into this documentary. That's incredible. That's so when cool. does it come out? Uh, we we have not announced a release date okay. yet, but okay. it'll be this year. Soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And documentaries take a long time. Listen. 